imagine right now for your life that uh, from now on you would not use any more time or energy on trying to figure out why you are thinking and feeling the way you are thinking and feeling. Just from now on, no more of that. Just imagine if that was possible. I mean, in my life where I see that this is actually gradually more and more possible due to, but to the balance view training, it's even difficult to put words on the relief, the empowerment, the energy saving program for sure. It takes a lot of effort. It's very exhausting to all the time check in with yourself. How are you doing? What are, what, oh, you know, this thought, this emotion, what to do with it, or oh, more of this, or you know, all of this. Honestly, <laughs> It's not the best we can do to ourselves. It's really not the most optimal use of this human resource. That's what I have really realized, that there was actually another way to, to be with myself. And, and of course, it's so understandable that when we have a day or a moment, a morning, where it's just afflictive, it's like, oh, Afflictions, it could be sadness, it could be, I don't know, sadness, grief, longing for something to change in life, wanting to do other things, boredom, you know, all this. Ugh. <laughs> Who wants that? You know, it's like so normal to first feel like maybe even despair. I just don't want this. Perfect. Really nothing wrong not a sign of anything other than a normal human experience. But the truth is that uh, it's unpredictable when these uh, so-called afflictive states or happy states are entering this system of who you are. You, you have no idea. It's really arrogant to think that you can control it. <laughs> I'm just speaking on behalf of what I realize myself, of course, that I really, really thought that it was possible to control, you know, to manage somehow. If I manage my circumstances, my relationships, managing other people, it's so, you know, it's innocent. You think that that would really bring us home to, to a better life. But then gradually, you know, as the years goes by, we don't really have many success stories. <laughs> And uh, that's what we ask you in this training, to really take a look at your own experience, what really works and what doesn't work. So when I met this training nine years ago, I, I had a long list of what didn't work. So I was quite open for trying something else. So you're very lucky to be here today and, and receive this single instruction that we give you here in this training which is short moments of open intelligence repeated many times until it becomes obvious. This is a lifesaver, honestly. It's a, a complete empowerment. And, and what that really means is that when, for example, there is this afflictions, it's a great topic because afflictions are often very, like we have, we are really trained to believe that they're very overwhelming and that they have some kind of a power to destroy over a day or destroy a relationship or destroy something. But it's not true, which is a bit shocking because we might have used so many days, months, years of our life to let this overwhelm us again and again. So maybe you feel a little bit like I did when I first heard this. I was very provoked when someone said that, actually, Nina, you know, this doesn't have a power over you. And I was like, Yes, it has an X, Y, Z, and because of, and yes, I have so many proof that this has a power over me. And because of this, this and this has happened in my life. And, ah, you know, all these words. But in reality, where is this uh, afflictions that I felt this morning or in the nightmare during, where is it right now? Okay, I can think about it again, but somehow where is it? So in this training, it's so powerful that we ask you with this instruction really to take a look in your own experience to see what is really true. 
Now, so what I saw with the afflictions, for example, I can take sadness, just sadness for no reason. But I love to look for reasons because I thought, okay, if I find the reason, of course, then I would be free of the sadness because I could just poof, destroy the, re the reason, the cause. You know, and many times I did that, but then the sadness was still there. So obviously there, there had to be another cause. And then again, you know, trying to get rid of it. But when we apply this instruction of short moments to, to, for instance, sadness, so what we do then, so you can have in mind whatever is afflictive for you right now. It's there, you see it, so you have told yourself that I'm so sad now and I hate this sadness and, and I want to get rid of it. So I can tell you how to get rid of it. It's to apply this single instruction of short moments. So what that means is in a short moment, you just check in with yourself. If there is something about you that is just alert, clear, available, you might stop thinking for a moment just in the middle of that sadness and just see that, wow, there's something there actually that is just permanently there, always, also during sleep, every, it's just permanently there. It didn't go anywhere, but it's just... You know, you just realize that in that moment that, oh, many times during the day, I'm not actually, I'm not aware that there is something in me that's always present, always stable, clear, alert, ready to let you s yourself having the thoughts and emotions you have. You're not caring about it. Just letting yourself be as you are. It's something about you always married to you. Something that, you know, so kind and so gentle something about you that always are very happy to let you be as you are. So in a short moment, you, you check in. So there are ways of doing that. You might say to yourself, I'm not going to describe this sadness for one second more. I'm just going to let it be as it is. No description, no analysis, not looking for any causes, not doing anything with it. Sounds simple. Sounds very simple, so simple that many of us that are very like maybe intellectually dispositioned think this is just ridiculous. <laughs> but test in your own experience. This is what we ask you. So what I saw with sadness and depression, these uh, black monsters that I was sure had left marks and traces and had destroyed something in me forever. I could maybe never function normally again so many ideas, very humbling to see that it was ideas. When I looked for a short moment, I let myself relax, body and mind relaxed. I couldn't find the black spots. I could think about it as an as a idea about myself, but where was it? So I realized that to go in and try to change my thoughts and emotions in this training, we call all this content of the mind just data or data streams because it's irrelevant what it is. It's the same mechanism. I just saw that this is unpredictable. It just appear in my mind, in my system. It's there for a while and then it disappears. It's a natural rhythm of this, thoughts and emotions. Coming, going, coming, going. You might have heard about this nice philosophy, but check it. This is, this is where you can empower yourself when you see it directly. When you see it directly. So then you see that actually, you know, as you trust your heart to beat. Maybe some of you are very into the physical and you, you kind of, oh, are you beating still? Or you maybe think about it. But, but for me, I never think about my heart. Sorry, heart, I take you a little bit for granted. But, <laughs> you know, it's doing its job. This beautiful heart. What about if you, if you had a training that could teach you, train your mind to trust that your thoughts and emotions could do the same. They could take care of themselves. They could come and go, come and go in their natural rhythm. You don't need to go in there, look at it, check it, control it, figure it out. You know, this, this is the way humanity will move forward. When each one of us just have a training and a support system that teach us to trust just this natural unfoldment of all data streams. 
then you see, you know, data come and go, leaving no trace. They dissolve, evaporate, just like mists evaporating in air. And then all that's left is you as open intelligence dynamically expressing yourself. It's inseparable all that you think and feel. It's just a dynamic expression of yourself. Just as the breeze is a dynamic expression of the air. And, and that's when you realize that, wow, all this hard work of trying to figure out yourself was all actually making puzzles out of the blue sky. It's like, oh, 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 trying to figure this out. But trust me, trust my experience after nine years. I would never go back to that old way of being with myself. Even if I was, even if my life was threatened, I wouldn't go back to it. Because it's so painful and exhausting. All this self-focus that was innocently trained, but it was never needed for me to function, for you to function, to relate, to talk, to, to be who you are. So, uh, you know, I, I just love to know that me as open intelligence is who I am, so it's not dependent on my age, if I'm awake or if I'm sleeping, if I'm here in India or in Norway, it's just who I am. So um, this is just something I trust. And uh, this body sometimes sleeps and sometimes <laughs> it's awake, but uh, it's, it's all good. <laughs> it's, it's great. And, um, you know, um, when it comes to uh, if I'm relying on open intelligence or recognizing open intelligence, I don't know, actually. But uh, it's nice with this training that we use different words that resonate for all people. So not all words would ref resonate for each one of us, because what we speak about is obviously that as you that doesn't have any words but includes all words, it's who you are. So we ask you to really, really have an experience of it. So that's why we ask you really, you don't need to think that I am funny, you don't need to think I'm anything, you don't need to believe anything I say. It's not what it's all about, but just, you know, it's just this, this beautiful gift that we give here that you can borrow trust from someone that's gone before. So that's what we provide with the empowerment network that we call the Four Mainstays. We, there's a network where we can, we can learn to trust each other. We need that. So obviously how this education and support, how it's evolving as, as humanity is evolving, no idea. What support is needed in tomorrow, one year, 50 years, you know, it's just evolving. It's, it's, it's us. It's the feedback from all of us what is needed to be supported, to realize that we don't need to figure out over data. But this is extremely important to be open, to see that in all this training up of being so independent, this individual, blah, 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 you know, <laughs> it's sometimes difficult to realize that each one of us needs, needs support. Many of us might feel threatened by that. But I found the greatest relief in my life when I open up to, to see that support is extremely important. But it could never look a certain way. So it's, it's always looking into what is of most benefit to train our minds right now. And what is obvious is that we need to train our mind to rely on open intelligence the same way we try and, we train to believe in all of our data. So we need to learn it through through reading, writing, speaking, reflecting, so the same way, at least for now. So that's why it's great in this training. We have text which, which you can read. So we have instructions where you write. You know, we have talks and videos you, you listen to. So these are, this, this, never take that for granted. It's, it's extremely important <laughs> to train up the mind. We don't need to like it. Life is not only about following what's fun and what we like, <laughs> which is, of course, very included. But, but if you really want to train up your mind to be stable and clear at all times, from my heart, I recommend this, this education because 
When I seen the shifts that has taken place in myself these nine years, there is nothing that stops me from seeing this happening for all human beings. Because really, I'm so just a normal person from a farm in Norway, you know, like it's just nothing special. But I had a deep desire to know what was really true as being me, as being human, and a deep desire to really support anyone to recognize it, to end all suffering, because the suffering lies in the description and the analysis of data. We were never meant to suffer <laughs> as who we are, never. So it takes some openness and humility to see that actually we are responsible. The self-leadership that, that you know, is, is there in each one of us.